Live from Boston, Massachusetts, it's The Q at the HP Vertica Big Data Conference 2014. Brought to you by HP. With your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Hey, welcome back everyone. Here we are live in Boston, Massachusetts. This is theCUBE, SiliconANGLE and Wikibon's flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal noise. I'm John Furrier, founder of SiliconANGLE. My co-host for this segment, Jeff Kelly, Wikibon senior analyst. Our next guest is Josh Rogers, the president of SyncSword. Welcome back to theCUBE. Uh, great to see you. Me. Great to see you. Um, actually, we get to see each other at all the big data events. You guys are becoming a household name in the big data industry. Um, and, and, and the fact that you have so much experience and track record, it's great to see you guys have such great success. Uh, uh, congratulations. Uh, but we're here at the HP Vertica Big Data Conference. So tell us what's going on with you guys. Um, and we've got this Hadoop world coming upon us very yep. fast. Vertica fits well into that world. We had just had some great conversations earlier. How do you guys fit into that ecosystem with Vertica, the splunks of the world, everyone else? Yeah, sure. So we've actually had a long standing relationship with Vertica, um, really since they launched the, uh, the original G of the product and have optimized our uh, offering to be able to be the fastest load mechanism into Vertica. So um, <clears throat> we have most recently updated that uh, towards the end of Q2 and uh, built an intelligent connector that does a few different things that will help customers uh, move data more seamlessly into uh, Vertic environments. Uh, the first thing is we've um, created a, a highly parallelized connector. Um, and what it does is it automatically determines how many parallel connections to establish to the database directly to the nodes. Um, and then it will actually balance the workload as the load happens, uh, depending on which nodes can accept data the fastest. And what we're seeing is customers are really you know, uh, amazed at the power of Vertica, but it's obviously limited by how much data they have in uh, their instance. And so the ability to kind of load large volumes of data in a uh, not only a, uh, a high, um, <clears throat> high capacity manner, but in an intelligent manner that makes efficient use of resources um, you know, is something that they value highly. In, in addition, one other point, you can do that directly from Hadoop. Um, and using reducers, uh, leveraging DMXH. So I got to ask you, what solution don't you have? <laughs> <laughs> you guys have mainframe, you have the cloud, and you have industry solutions. Uh, it's interesting, right? Where you know some people, you know, Dave and I always speculate the cloud is essentially big iron that's decentralized, called the, cloud, the mainframe in the cloud. Right. Um, we're kind of coming back to that that yeah. world, right? Yeah. So yeah. you've been there, done that. SyncSort as a company, right. and have all that experience. Yep. I mean, you guys are in a good position. I mean, are you yeah. worried that you're not focused enough? Or no, you know, are you it's, it's actually, let me, let me simplify it a little bit. I mean, what we have, if you look at the core IP of what we have, it's an ability to take the processing of data, you know, set-based operations on data, um, and do that in a highly uh, performant manner, but it also leveraging um, you know, efficiency and intelligence to drive, to make that performance easy to get and to make uh, efficient use of resources. And that's true on the mainframe in 1968, and it's true on our open systems products you know, starting in the 90s. And now what we're doing is going around the ecosystem of big data and making it easy for customers to tap into those processing capabilities depend, you know, regardless of what kind of other technologies they're using, Vertica, Hadoop. Um, most recently we announced a relationship with Splunk. That's a really interesting one. Yeah, we'll be doing dot conference. This theCUBE will be there at Splunk. Yep. So Splunk obviously went public, great success. Um, I got to ask you though, because this is something that Jeff and I were talking about prior to this event and with Dave Vellante and certainly our team in, in Silicon Valley is, the cloud has opened up the developer market and changed yep. the game on, on the developers. Yep. So you're seeing DevOps as a major driver for innovation, and you got categorically two types of developers. Born in the cloud, the young guys who right. have never loaded Linux, they just run the stack from the cloud, and the old guys like us, I guess me. Um, and then you know, anyone over pretty much 30 has loaded Linux. It's been around, open source certainly standard across. Yep. So old school, and then new schools born in the cloud. That's a huge development change. What's your take on the developer market? How do you guys talk to the young developers, or do you, and how do enterprises bring some of that mojo of DevOps into the enterprise? Yeah, sure. So we certainly talk to the young developers. We have customers that span both large enterprise traditional industries as well as uh, you know, next generation companies, whether it's e-commerce or gaming. Um, and so we, you know, we have developers using our tools from, um, from both those pockets of uh, 
of the community. Um, again, our strategy is to make our software available for how they'd like to consume it. So we have, uh, in November of last year, we launched uh, the, the Hadoop offering in the cloud. Um, in May of this year, we offered uh, the ETL version uh, directly on EC2. And so what we found is huge uptake um, by you know de the development community to build you know integrations in you know in the cloud in the cloud. Some of those get run in the cloud. Some of those get run on on, uh, on premise. We had a customer in Q2 that was starting on premise um, and using our our technology to to uh, develop their data integration routines. But their ultimate goal is to run everything in the cloud. So let's dig into that a little bit more. So you know we see, we certainly hear about cloud and big data kind of mentioned in the same breath mm -hmm. a lot. Yep. But you know, kind of cloud one that other was concerns about security. You know, I why think the security we, concerns are the... starting to, to fade a little mm -hmm. bit when you talk about Amazon. I mean, they're just as secure as you know any yep. any any on-premise data center. Uh, but you know, from your vantage point, I mean, so you have a good vantage point because you're looking at you know clients that are both running on-premise yep. and that are thinking about moving to the cloud, as you just yep. mentioned. What are some what are, what are the dynamics that you're seeing in, in that environment? Are you starting to see a migration towards the cloud for beyond just kind of POCs? Is it becoming oh, yeah, a, a destination for production mm -hmm. workloads? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think one say, one kind of construct that's probably safe to assume is that everybody's got a mixture of workloads. Some on premise, some in the cloud. Some are just starting in the cloud and it's mm -hmm. just dev, um, but their goal is to move that more aggressively for actual production workloads in the cloud. That's, and, and it's getting over some of these security hurdles um, and some network bottlenecks, et cetera. But that's, that's the, the direction that people are moving. And sometimes that's a private cloud, sometimes that's an, an Amazon. Mm -hmm. uh, but in general, I think we're going to be seeing people take more and more advantage of you know, public cloud infrastructure, particularly as security gets, um, uh, gets more sophisticated. Mm -hmm. I, I just, the economics are, it's hard to, you know, argue with uh, economic you know, right so is that so is that largely the economic question of the economic factors why people are looking to make this move or is it a combination of that and you know the technical complexity of running some of these big data uh, systems I think I think it boils down to economics you know to get the level of flexibility to be able to scale up and scale down workloads mm -hmm. to the amount of infrastructure you'd have to build in you know an on-premise fashion just becomes you know um, economically unfeasible um, so at the end of the day, I think it's economics, but there's certainly a level of agility that people get um, that they, you know, that, that causes them to pursue that strategy. But everybody at this point has some piece of their portfolio, whether it's dev, whether it's some subset of applications that are running in the cloud. Yeah, well it's interesting, because you, 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 if you talk to some CIOs, they say, no, no, we're not using the cloud for anything. And then you talk to some of the developers, it's like, of course, I'm using this application or that application. Yeah. And sometimes there's not that visibility from a high level, from a CIO level, um, which could create complications of its own. Yeah. Um, but that's, well, that's true in Hadoop as well, right? Is oh, that, yeah. That there's lots of CIOs that don't know how much they're doing with Hadoop because it's been started by shadow IT yep. groups on the business, et cetera. Yeah, with Hadoop, with, we hear that with NoSQL all the time. Yep. You know, oh, we're not using Mongo for anything. Well, actually, right. yeah, you've got some developers using yep. it for a number of things. So, yep. um, interesting. So, let's dig into the Splunk yep. relationship a little bit because obviously they're one of the, you know, the hottest big data companies yep. out there and at least in terms of uh, the public markets, they get a lot of attention yep. from the mainstream press. So what are you guys doing with them? Yeah, so uh, you know, as you know, Splunk allows you to kind of glean operational intelligence out of machine data. And, and they've got this vertical stack that allows you to take you know, uh, log data and visualize and understand uh, aspects of either your operational environment, risk, fraud, et cetera. And there's a bunch of apps that people have started mm -hmm. to build uh, on top of Splunk. And, and one of the most um, you know, pervasive kind of platforms on the planet, particularly in the enterprise, is the mainframe. Um, and what people may not know about the mainframe is it probably has the richest log data of any uh, system on the planet. <laughs> so um, the challenge is that that log data needs to be intercepted and moved into a Splunk environment in the right way that doesn't put a big load from a CPU perspective mm -hmm. on the box. Um, the data formats are very different. Um, there's actually a tremendous number of types of logs. So there's this notion of SMF records, which there's a hundred and I think there's 200 different types of SMF record with each one having sub uh, components. So being able to kind of interpret these logs is fairly complicated. Um, what we've seen consistently from Splunk's customers is that they are looking to um, build scenarios that incorporate both open systems log um, data from you know, Linux environments, et cetera, with their mainframe log data. Today, they don't have a good way, um, either cost-effective or technically, to get that log data on a real-time basis into their Splunk environments. Um, Splunk doesn't have resident in its uh, 
uh, development group the expertise to be able to decipher those that uh, mainframe log data. We obviously have that. Right, that's where we're here. So what we're building is a, um, and what we've announced is a, a, um, a forwarder. That's that's Splunk lingo for the piece of code that takes log data and ships it down into Splunk Enterprise. So yeah, that's it's much more than just a connector. There's a lot more that There's goes. There's a lot into of it intelligence there, and, yeah. and in particular on the mainframe to do that in a non-disruptive way, in a way that doesn't drive a lot of MIPS, um, and is in is real time uh, and meets the SLAs of the specific application solutions they want to build is fairly complex. But you know we are uh, we've we've announced the initial version, the real time version will beta. Uh, in the next week or so, and we'll go GA by the end of Q3. Okay, so, fantastic. Yeah, we're really excited about the uh, the opportunity to work with Splunk and uh, the joint value proposition of the of the solution. Yeah, I mean, as, as we've talked about before, so we've been doing some survey work and certainly yeah. finding that, you know, I think it was over 60% of the uh, big data practitioners we talked to have already moved some workload from a mainframe or from a data warehouse into right. Hadoop. So huge opportunity there and, you yeah. know, it's driven by cost, but also by a lot of the capabilities that you can, now once you've got that data there and it's unlocked right. from those traditional right. systems, there's a lot more you can do with it. And one of the things we're seeing just in general around mainframe is the, the vendors that have specialized in the mainframe for the last, you know, uh, four decades um, generally have a set of products and revenue streams that are kind of dependent upon that data staying on the mainframe. Um, and so they're not as kind of, they don't have the incentive necessary to collaborate with a Splunk <laughs> or a Cloudera or right. Hortonworks or a Vertica to figure out how to move that data off platform into these environments, well, interesting. and we do. Yeah, the data warehouse vendors, you might you might substitute them for mainframe yeah, vendors. Yeah, sure. Similar. Exactly. Well, Josh, issue. I wanted to interrupt you guys. We have to go live to the keynote that's uh, going on right now, the CIO from the U.S. Postal Service we had on earlier. Um, the world's changing, his, his interview was great. We, we joked, will we be delivering packages by drones? Because right. Amazon's right on nipping at your heels. Um, we really appreciate you coming on. We'll see you in New York City. Uh, Josh with, the, uh, with SyncSort, Josh Rogers, the president of SyncSort, uh, doing it all with cloud, DevOps. Thanks for coming on theCUBE, really Thanks appreciate Thanks so much, great appreciate to see it. You. We'll be right back at the short break. This is theCUBE.